Hello, Dimitri. How are you doing today? I'm great, Jonathan. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Nice to see you and to speak to you uh, after so long. And uh, always a pleasure to to see some of your posts on social media or stay in touch. It's uh, yeah, it's great. And I'm excited to speak to you because you are a charter financial consultant. You've been yes. doing that for 12 years and you've helped hundreds of families with their uh, personal finance journey. And I think it's, yeah, you have some uh, great info to, yeah, to, to bring to the show today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to share more and uh, for all your listeners to be able to get some nuggets of wisdom to take with them. Yeah, yeah. Where are we calling you to? Uh, to? Yeah, so I'm, I'm currently here in Florida in the U.S. Uh, my, my home base is kind of Boston. That's where I've been from. Uh, but about a year and a half ago, I, I purchased a, an RV, a recreational vehicle, which is uh, in many ways a, a home on wheels that I'm able to really take all over the country. Uh, last year in 2019, I traveled 25 states in 25 weeks uh, teaching all about personal finance around the country um, because they do not teach this kind of stuff in schools. And so there's so many millions of families that need to have guidance uh, and some, some good tips on how to make smarter decisions. Yeah, excellent. And I think you have a, a philosophy of your grandma that you have a uh, posted about on social media. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, philosophy or, uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, there are so many different things when we think about getting our finances organized that I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate. It's tough to figure out where to start. What do we do first? Do we pay off all of our debt? Mm -hmm. uh, do we invest in the market? Uh, do we budget? Uh, what do we do first, second, yeah. Third. And yes, you know, uh, when I was growing up in school, there was a old mathematics kind of um, uh, mnemonic device called PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. And it was taught to us in school as the order of operations. Mm -hmm. When solving an arithmetic problem, a mathematics problem, an equation, there are certain things you have to do first, second, third, fourth, or else you're going to get the wrong answer. Yeah, it's like an algorithm. So, yeah, exactly. And so in that uh, lesson, we were always taught, you know, you have to do things that are in parentheses first. So if you mm -hmm. see parentheses in a math problem, focus there. Uh, then exponents, right? The E, if you see a little two or a little three above a number, you have to do that first. Then comes multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And if you don't follow that order, you're not going to get the right answer. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was probably about, um, gosh, maybe seven years ago now, if not eight or more, that I made an exact parallel of PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, into financial planning and how to have the right order mm -hmm. in organizing uh, your finances and building a plan that can withstand the test of time that will not allow something to happen in the future that will knock you backwards, even worse potentially than where you were when you started. Yeah. And I think so much of life, we cannot predict what's going to happen. Uh, uh, well, I mean, we are in this situation right now. <laughs> exactly, right? I mean, we look at coronavirus and the pandemic globally that's impacted the global economy. And mm -hmm. I don't think anyone saw a shutdown coming, right? And so mm -hmm. for folks that weren't prepared for this kind of interruption, they're faced with pain, financial challenges. And instead, we talk about if you follow PEMDAS the right way, you're almost financially bulletproof against the things that could go wrong in the future that would knock you backwards. It's like you've built the ship that can with withstand a storm. Yeah. And that's a really important thing to feel financially. And if you'd like, I'd, I'd be more than happy to share in details what maybe what PEMDAS stands for in finance. Exactly. That's what, that was my next question. Yeah. So, so what does PEMDAS for, stands for? <laughs> yeah. So if we, for your listeners, you know, P-E-M-D-A-S. Let's go over this really quick. I won't go into too much detail, but I'll list those out for yeah. you. So the P stands for protection. Making sure that you are protected against things that can go wrong. And that mm -hmm. includes the right kind of insurances and the right kind of legal documents. And a lot of people think, man, why is insurance one of the first things I should do when I have credit card debt or when I don't have a full emergency fund yet? Well, the E is emergency fund, right? That's the second letter. Yeah. And just think about it, Jonathan. Imagine if 
an individual works really hard to save up six months worth of an emergency fund. Okay. Yep. They spend time taking money from their paychecks and putting it into a savings account and not touching it. And they finally filled up their savings account. And they're so excited. They go out for a drive to go maybe out to a restaurant, have a glass of champagne or a drink. And on the way they hit somebody with their car who was crossing the street by accident. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the right kind of car insurance that protects them against a potential lawsuit, that person could come after them. And then what would happen with all the money that they just saved up in the emergency fund? It's all gone. It could all be gone. Yeah. Uh, imagine they paid off all of their student loans and credit card debt only to then face a lawsuit, right? Another type of protection that is an example here is things like health insurance, as well as disability insurance, income protection. Mm -hmm. Imagine you work so hard to pay off your loans, save and invest, and then two years from now, three years from now, unexpectedly you get sick or you get hurt mm -hmm. or there's an accident or an illness and now you have to miss work for a while. What's going to happen to the balances in your savings account? They start exactly. to go down. Yeah. You know, what might happen to the credit cards going up? And so we want to make sure that we avoid that. So protection includes, again, insurances and legal documents. And the goal here is to have the right amount of coverage at the lowest possible premium. The premium is what you pay each month or each year mm. for the coverage. Yeah. So again, low premium, the right amount of coverage, thumbs up. And then E, emergency fund. We talk here about having money in the bank, right? To make mm -hmm. sure that you get laid off from your job or if coronavirus, COVID-19 also happens in COVID-22, you know, in three yeah, who years. Knows? Yeah. <laughs> We want to make sure that you don't have to, for example, oh man, I just got laid off. I don't have any money in the bank. I still need to pay my bills. I'm going to need to take money out of my retirement plan at work in order to pay my rent next month. Mm. Oh, and if the stock market has gone down and there's penalties to pay, you can just imagine how toxic that might end up being. Yep. Terrifying. So protection, emergency fund. The next M is monthly cash flow management. Uh, I personally think the word budget is a little bit of a con constricting, choking word. It has this stigma to it. Huh? It's like constraint, uh, you feel crippled, I have my it, limits. It's like the, word, um, like the word diet. You know, who wants to go on a diet? Let's go, you know, you, think <laughs> you, you can't eat, you know, right yeah. away. And instead we talk about managing cash flow. What I talk about with my clients here is how do you organize your bank accounts? How many mm -hmm. checking and savings accounts do you use? How do you pay your bills and spend money and save money each month? And making sure that we have an organized system of transfers so that, you know, I'll give you an example. I've met folks in my career now, the first meeting with a new client who might have a great income, $500,000 per year or more, living month to month, paycheck to paycheck, telling me, Dimitri, I'm making $45,000 next month and it's gone before it even comes in. I need to pay off my bills from last month. Mm -hmm. And that's terrifying when you think about that because there is the other side of the coin. People who manage their cash flow well, I have clients who are public school teachers who work in the nonprofit sector, um, who maybe have incomes that are $50,000 per year or $60,000 per year, and they are organized, protected properly, saving the right amount, going on vacations, you know, no toxic yeah. debt. Yet they're making one-tenth of what someone else might be making. You know, we always talk, it's not about what you make, it's about what you do with it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and then after protection, emergency fund, and monthly cash flow management, D, the big D, as many listeners I'm sure can imagine, is debt. And this is where sometimes when folks start to think about getting their finances in order, they start here, when in reality, I'm telling you, this is step four out of six, is to identify debt to pay down. And what I coach people on is to make sure that they understand what debt is most toxic that they have in their life versus what debt is okay to just pay the minimum balance and not stress and work it in just like a bill each month into your yep. cash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure in different countries, 
different interest rate environments, different financial products. Here in the United States, credit cards can charge upwards of 25 to 30 percent annual interest on balances. Uh, is it similar in Europe, I assume? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> depending on your credit card and the country, but I'm familiar with 20 percent. So it can be 22, it can be 17, you know, depending on where you live. Sometimes I play a game with my clients, which is how old is the interest rate on your credit card? Is it old mm -hmm. enough to buy a car? Is it old enough to smoke? <laughs> is it old enough to drink? Is it, you know, 15, 18, 21, 25? <laughs> how old is that interest rate? And identifying, eliminating the higher interest debts first, super important, mm -hmm. and having um, perspective around an interest rate environment. You know, rates are historically low right now. Um, if you compare interest rates in 2020 to how they were in 1990, just 30 years ago, mm -hmm. we're talking about rates being one fourth of what they were 30 years ago. Exactly. And a lot of our young generation, we may not um, feel that. We don't remember what it was like to have a 12% car loan or a 16% mortgage, right? For us, those numbers now are less than 5%. Yeah, exactly. And so to be able to have an understanding on how you're paying down your debt, not necessarily paying off all the debt, because I, I make it very clear, being debt free does not guarantee financial success for the rest of your life. You can be debt free and mm -hmm. broke. <laughs> this, this exists. You know, if you just think about the, the person who might be asking for spare change outside of the cafe on the street, I don't think they have much debt, but they also don't have many assets or much cash flow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, next step five, the A, this is kind of a sexy topic people like is asset optimization. This involves more of investing, you know, saying, hey, I've got enough money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I make it work harder for me? Right. So retirement accounts, the stock market, real estate investing all fits into, excuse me, into this category here. Yeah. And then last but not least, the S stands for succession planning or estate planning to make sure that, well, we've uh, in the United States, an estate planning attorney would be the person who helps make sure that things like a will, trusts, um, healthcare proxy, power of attorney, the legal documents to make sure that what the you are working in. Yeah, you're working so hard to yeah. build up wealth. Mm -hmm. Imagine that the government takes a big piece of it when you pass away and it doesn't even go to the people that you want it to. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we mitigate taxes, we have the right kind of legal planning done. I call that like the bow on the Christmas present, you know, to yeah. be able to, make sure that, oh, okay, we're finished. And what I've loved, Jonathan, is that no matter what financial product exists in the world, it fits into one of those six categories. It's either protection, emergency fund, cash flow management, debt pay down, asset or succession planning. That's everything. Yeah, very good. And uh, Dimitri, uh, sometimes I've seen some tweets of yours. I mean, I like that plan. And then you, you uh, compare or you, you make some comments on some others uh, plans. <laughs> For example, a famous American guy is Dave Ramsey. Mm. which um, yep. has written The Total Money Makeover. It's a popular book. I haven't read it myself. I think it's too practical. And if it, it works well if you're in depth, maybe. So I don't know. I haven't spent time on it yet. Yeah. And it's uh, very, okay, it's maybe too focused on American uh, market for me. But then you say, yeah, there's some flaws in that book or in that, in that approach. What would that be? Because the guy helped uh, many, many thousands Brilliant. of people as well. Millions. Yes. Yeah. I think, you know, look, I, and I mean this with all respect towards Dave, because I, I think he's made a, an incredible impact in millions of people's mm -hmm. lives. Uh, a good comparison that I could make here would be, let's imagine that uh, as an individual, that person is a couch potato, as we call them. Imagine this person is uh, overweight. They sit on the couch, they don't exercise, and all they do is eat potato chips and watch Netflix. You know, mm -hmm. if that's all they do, and then someone comes into their life and inspires them to get off their butt, put down the bag of potato chips, yep. and do some jumping jacks. My question would be, Jonathan, is doing jumping jacks better than sitting on the couch eating potato chips for your health? What would you say? Yes. 
Of, of course, of course, yeah. right? And who's the of same way for millions of Americans who never even thought about financial planning, who are the equivalent of the couch potato when it comes to fitness on the financial side. Yeah. That for them, just to do some jumping jacks is absolutely a step in the right direction. Hey, let's eliminate your debt. You know, let's get you saving a thousand dollars in your emergency fund. Mm -hmm. um, let's do a 15 year mortgage if you want to buy, whatever, right? These are some of the things that Dave Ramsey preaches, maxing out your 401k contribution. You know, these are like jumping jacks for a couch potato. But yeah. if I was to ask you, Jonathan, now you know fitness. You, you're a healthy guy, man. I, I see those guns, man. I see the muscles. <laughs> I know you work out. Let me ask you this. If the only thing you do in your life is jumping jacks, are you going to be physically fit as you could be? No. I mean, you need to. It's a whole approach. It's not just uh, this one exercise. And I'm not a robot that will just do one thing. Exactly. We know jumping jacks might be a great form of cardiovascular exercise mm -hmm. to help the couch potato now burn some calories, lose some weight and get healthier. It's but good it's to, not, to get started. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not optimal. It's good. It's mm -hmm. not great. Yeah. It is better than nothing, but it's not what I call optimal. Yeah. And for Dave, uh, you know, I mean, this again, with all due respect, uh, I look at his approach as kind of a um, appealing to the lowest common denominator. You know, how can we help millions of people get off the couch with their finances mm -hmm. and do some jumping jacks? And yes, he's helped millions shed some pounds and get <laughs> healthy with cardio. Yeah. However, the, the gap between jumping jacks and let's say, for example, a personal trainer mm -hmm. who gives you a full workout plan, who is evolving your work out as you grow and evolve, right? Is the next level of physical health where things like nutrition play a role, things like flexibility, yoga, um, weight lifting, strength training, protein supplements, vitamins. There is so many different moving parts to one's physical health. The same parallel can be made to your financial health. It's not, unfortunately, I, I'm concerned because I think in some ways it can do more harm than good mm -hmm. if people are kind of brainwashed to think, oh, all I need to do is jumping jacks. Jumping all jacks, I need to yeah. do is pay off my debt and max out my 401k and that's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm, nothing can go wrong. Many things can still happen that would keep you from being optimally healthy with your finances. And that's where I really live is in that gap of the difference between good to great. Yeah, excellent. And, and then Dimitri, um, maybe a bit more general about your practice. You've helped as well uh, families through, um, I mean, through your job. Um, what are some common questions or some common problems, issues that, uh, that you have faced? I mean, the most common ones, you have like two or three examples yeah. that uh, most families struggle with when it comes to finances? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think one that comes to mind that I think I'm sure a lot of your listeners can, um, uh, can, can, can really see themselves dealing with is mm -hmm. just managing the dollars that come in each month, each year. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear so many people when we first start talking, they say, you know, I just did my taxes and I looked at how much money I made last year. And I'm thinking, where did it go? <laughs> what happened to it? And so I think the, the big change, the big shift that I've seen a lot of clients really improve with that I've worked with mm -hmm. has been in how they organize things as simple as their bank accounts to make sure that the same bank account that pays their rent or their mortgage is not the same account that pays for their booze when they go out drinking with their friends, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Their emergency fund is also not the same account that they tap into when they want to book a vacation. You know what I mean? So yeah. organizing bank accounts, there is a golden rule that I teach people that I can mm -hmm. share with your audience, which is the golden rule of bank accounts. Each bank account can only have one purpose. Yeah. It needs a name. You can't have one account that does two or three or four different things because then you're going to have dollars falling through the cracks, falling through your fingers mm -hmm. when you work so hard to earn those dollars in the first place. And I think so many people think, you know what, Jonathan, if only I made a little bit more money, 
my financial picture would be so much better. Oh, I'm making 80,000 now. If only I made 100,000, oh man, I'd be out of debt, saving, everything will be great. And I think we both know that making more money will oftentimes just give you more money to mismanage. Or to, yeah, more money to spend, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So cash flow management has proven to be uh, a huge mind shift that mm -hmm. when clients, and I, you know, my program is called 90 Day Money Pro because, you know, it takes 21 days to build a habit, mm -hmm. but it takes 90 days to make it your lifestyle, to make it rock solid and it stays with you. And so what I've shown folks is that by changing your bank account system a little bit now, when you have a few pay, 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 paycheck cycles coming in and you've learned how to set up the transfers and the things the right way, after three months, you look back and I've had so many clients say, oh, Dimitri, where was this 10 years ago when I graduated yeah. college? Or why didn't I do this sooner? You know, I wasted all that money I used to make. And I just tell them, look, let's not look backwards and second guess. Instead, let's learn and move forward. Yeah, and, and I like it because it's not very complicated in the end. It's just, um, okay, you need to set up maybe with your bank, and, but it's nothing complicated. I mean, I, I mean, in, in your mind, it's, it's very easy, actually. You, you just put your money, you give a roll to every dollar or to every yes. euros, whatever. But, I mean, that's the idea. Okay, then you talk to your bank on how to split the accounts, but that's it. And then you, auto, you make the automatic transfer and... You're and set. that's it. It allows you to manage your cash flow, like you said, to give each dollar a job, a purpose, exactly. a role. Hmm. You know, and, and that changes people's lives. You know, it takes people who are, let's say, making eighty thousand dollars per year, and they're able to all of a sudden save twenty thousand a year that they never even thought they would be able to do. When there are peers of theirs who might be making two hundred thousand dollars per year and they are not saving twenty thousand a year so yeah. to be able to have an optimized balanced system i say have your cake and eat it too yeah no and um, i don't know about you but at least for me you know when you told the story when i have more money it will solve my problems or whatever i see myself in my early career days you know i mean i was like making some money let's say forty thousand and then i was like yeah if I make 50,000, I get promoted, it will go better. And then I get that promotion uh, later on. And then I'm like, but I still uh, have no money left or uh, I still yes. have the same amount of money left at the end of the month. So it doesn't change much. I, so, I heard yeah. a great way of it being described was like chasing the horizon. You're mm -hmm. never going to catch it. It's always in front of you. Yeah. And it felt that way. I know in, growing up in, in the suburbs of Boston, it was this feeling of oh, making six figures. Once you make six figures a year, you've made it. And I'll tell you what, you get there, you work hard, you bust your ass to get to six figures. And I'll tell you what most people do is they realize, oh, the number's not 100,000, I need 250. That's actually the number. And then they work, 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 work to get to 250 and then they go, you know, I was wrong. I need 500, I forgot. I didn't count this and this and that. You know, boom, 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 boom. And it never is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Okay, I see. And then you mentioned uh, the suburbs. <clears throat> so you grew up in um, in Boston. So can you? I, th I think you have quite a compelling story and uh, about yeah. that. And um, it's also actually the reason why you became um, a financial consultant. Can you tell us? Can you tell us sure. your, so your? Can you share your? Yeah, story? I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it on the shorter side. But I'll yeah. say, you know, look, I was I was born in the former Soviet Union in Belarus. My mm -hmm. family their mid thirties uh, with my older brother and me uh, and my grandparents, you know, we, we all immigrated from the Soviet Union as it was falling apart uh, in the late 1980s to come to the United States. We came with a few suitcases, a few thousand dollars, and I was just a toddler. Uh, I didn't know, you know, anything. And when we came here, look, for many years, my, my parents had to, they were struggling. You know, my mother was a physician overseas. My father was an engineer. Um, but like I'm sure so many of your listeners know, when you immigrate from one country to another, uh, at least back then, your degrees and credits did not transfer. You know, my mother tells a story of how you know, they looked at her diploma in, in Russian language. And it's like, lady, we can't even read this. You know, we don't know what it says. Mm, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my, my mother went back and redid her medical residency in Boston all over again mm -hmm. uh, in the first few years when we moved here. While my father was, again, an engineer, but he was delivering pizzas. He was driving a taxi, you know, mm. he was doing odd jobs around the neighborhood to make sure that my family could pay the bills, 
that we yeah. and we did you know, fairly paycheck to paycheck for many years until a friend of my mother's recommended that she you know talk to this guy who <laughs> speaks Russian is an expert in finance and and is an advisor who can help my parents make smarter decisions and in 1995 my mom and dad went and met with this guy and it it changed their life not only theirs but mine you know mm -hmm. it, Gentlemen showed them, hey, these, this is the system in the United States. You know, this is how you organize and prepare for home ownership. This is how you save for the future and invest. Mm. This is how you pay down your debt. This is how you organize yourself. This is how the insurance industry works. For them to be able to make those smart decisions and have systems in place where I'm blessed to say, you know, we grew up in a safe community, in a, a home that my parents owned. Uh, in my neighborhood, I could put on rollerblades and just ride around and not fear for my safety. Um, you know, there wasn't a liquor store and a gun shop on each corner in my neighborhood. It was, you know, a convenience store, supermarket and uh, toy stores, you know, a, a library of bookstores. Mm -hmm. and, um, it does, is by no means is it something I take for granted. I, as I've gotten older, I've realized how much yeah. of a, <clears throat> a privilege and a blessing uh, it was to um, to see the hard work that my parents put in and how it paid off. And for me, as I grew and uh, was able to build my career from uh, you know, bagging groceries at a, at a supermarket when I was 14 years old, just starting mm -hmm. high school, working after school, uh, to working in a bank when I was 18 as a bank teller, uh, to being a financial advisor by 21. Uh, yes, I mean, it's, um, for me, it's a blessing to be able to have spent my career helping other families, helping folks you know, break the chains of generational poverty uh, yeah. and replace them with generational wealth to help them, you know, the same way someone helped out my parents for me mm -hmm. to be able to, to pay that forward and help others. Uh, I feel like uh, I joke and I say it's like uh, Simba in the Lion King, you know, the circle of life, you know, yeah. <laughs> I get to pay it forward. <laughs> no, but it's nice. It, it, it's a great, um, I mean, it's a great story. I really like, I really like it, but it must not have been easy. You know, I mean, you know, I went to university as well. And, you know, if with my degree, I need to deliver pizzas, uh, you know, it's a shock personally. Yeah. I mean, not, yes. not that I'm, I'm not uh, keen on status and all these things. I don't care about that. But mm. still, I mean, you studied hard, you, you made your way, you, you worked a few years. <clears throat> I mean, you are a professional. I mean, and then, okay, it's, oh, no, it's not valid. I mean, I would be like, uh, I would be angry, really. Yes. And I think it's, you know, my, my father... Um, I think was a little bit, it was a little bit more challenging for him to adjust, not only culture wise, but I think language as well. For him, he didn't pick it up quite as easily. And, um, you know, my mother became a physician in 1995. She's been a, a general practitioner, internal medicine doctor mm -hmm. at a big hospital in greater Boston with her own private practice for 25 years, you know, helping patients and being a successful doctor. My father has been a taxi and my father still to this day has, has been driving a taxi, you know, 25 years. Wow. So it's, it's been an interesting, um, you know, balance and, and dichotomy between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And they've always had someone to go to, to talk to about their finances. Yeah, and, and I, think, and I think everybody deserves to have somebody like that. No. Okay. That's, that's excellent. And yeah, it really shows, you know, how a conversation can spark a better life a conversation on getting better control on your finances. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's not simple. I mean, it is simple. It is simple. And then, you know, it sparks a, a series of habits, I guess, a series of habits, a series of behaviors towards yes. getting more control and getting informed, getting that knowledge firsthand. That's, I think, the important part. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Very cool. Well, look, Dimitri, uh, thank you so much for, uh, joining us today and for sharing uh, your tips, the, the PEMDAS. I think it's very practical and uh, actionable for the listeners. It's also, yeah, like the, the bulletproof part um, because yeah, it, it's a it makes sense. It's a logical way of uh, dealing with your finances. I really like it. And uh, yeah, of course, thanks for sharing your story. It's personal and thanks for sharing, sharing it here on the show. So thank you for that. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dimitri, as you know, we always have our three quick fire questions at the end of the show. Yes. Are you ready? Who as ready as I will ever be. Awesome. So question number one, what has been your best investment so far, Dimitri? 
Yeah, so I think uh, the way I can answer this question is that my best investment thus far for me personally has mm -hmm. been a lakefront, waterfront property in New Hampshire, in New England, uh, the United States, that was purchased with a small down payment. Mm -hmm. uh, it is two buildings on one lot, one of which I keep rented out uh, on a long-term lease with a long-term tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been there for three years since I bought it. And the other main house is right on the water with its own little private beach, uh, three bedroom, two bathroom, little, little lake house. And uh, this summer, it is rented out for $38,000 total in gross rents wow. in just a little bit over three months. And to add some more perspective, you know, my out of pocket is probably less than 2000 per month. Uh, so there's quite a bit of profit that that vacation property uh, is paying oh. us in rent income. And also, you know, it's tough to put a dollar sign uh, onto the joy and relaxation and yeah, beauty cool. that we get to enjoy up there as well. So uh, real estate and that transaction in particular has proven to be an excellent decision. Fantastic, fantastic. And then um, second question, Dimitri, what is the best book you've read or, sorry, I'll reformulate, what, what is the best book recommendation you, you, you want to make here today? And it does not need to be a financial book. Yes, you know, I think it's, it's a, a book that might seem financial. It is very much about life and personal development and personal growth. Mm -hmm. And that book is uh, written by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. Uh, for those who have uh, heard of it, uh, but maybe read it in the past, I would suggest reading it again. Uh, for mm -hmm. those who have never read it, please pick it up, do some research. Uh, it is the kind of book that you're always a different person when you're reading it. So similar to that saying, uh, you cannot step into the same river two times because the water is always moving, right? Mm -hmm. The river is a river. The same way here, when you read the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, written by Napoleon Hill, was when in the early 20th century, he was personally told to interview some of the most powerful and successful businessmen of the early 20th century, from Henry Ford to Dale Carnegie to Rockefeller to some of the others. And some of the common threads and the secrets to success that he was able to learn and take away from all of those interviews were condensed into this book that he wrote. So the book is, gosh, probably almost 100 years old, if not um, mm -hmm. uh, more. And still to this day, it's writing really rings true. Uh, I know folks who read it every day like it's the Bible. And it's true, you know, even, even just a few pages or a chapter at a time will get your brain and gears moving to be thinking through, um, not just, again, the title, Think and Grow Rich, can seem a little um, hokey, right? Or a little yeah, corny. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, the content between the covers is flawless, incredible value uh, that if any of your listeners have not gotten a chance to check out, highly recommend. Okay, very good. Actually, you know, I have the audiobook myself, but I haven't done it yet. So um, I need to read it. I need to read or listen to it as well. So the, the homework for me here. <laughs> yeah, the stories you'll hear are great. He, he speaks with mm -hmm. a lot of examples, a lot of uh, case studies mm -hmm. that you can very much draw parallels into everyday life and how we can be more uh, efficient not only as as business people and as financial organizing you know individuals mm -hmm. but as people yeah okay no very good tip uh, dimitri i like it and then uh, the third one what is the best purchase you've made for under a hundred dollars you know this was a challenging thing to think of uh, yeah. but i think the best, the best way that i can answer this and the my favorite purchase that i make that's less than a hundred dollars is when i purchase a piggy bank for my clients uh, oftentimes as uh, parents have their first or second or third children uh, i have a client of mine who's very artistic and she will draw uh, the child's name and then some designs on the piggy bank that is made out of ceramics and it's, it's a little pig and uh, to gift that to a family to be able to realize that they can set aside and plan for the tomorrows for their children uh, mm -hmm. is, is pretty darn cool. And correct me if I'm wrong, man, I think that's a piggy bank that you have over there, right? And that is where I started to build my own wealth. Wow. This is the, my piggy bank. It says Villa Jonathan, you see? Oh, dude, I love that, man. 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll, uh, for the listeners uh, uh, that are listening to the podcast, um, I'll, I'll make a picture and I'll put it in the show notes so everybody can see it. This is where it all started for me. <laughs> and that's the thing. We, everybody has to start somewhere. And for all of you folks listening, whether you haven't started yet or you've tried some things and feel like they maybe haven't worked as well as you want them to, or even if you're advanced and you think you're doing great, uh, there's always room for improvement. There's always ways to take those next steps. And for anyone who hasn't started yet, I always say that's the first workout is always the most challenging one, yeah. isn't it? You know? Absolutely. Those jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right get off the couch no more get potato off the couch. Chip. yeah excellent <laughs> so dimitri where can uh, people learn more about uh, your tips your um i mean where can they see and hear more that's about your about you yeah so 90 day that's nine zero day money pro 90 day money pro on instagram facebook twitter and youtube um, I'm sure we can put a link down in the, the details of this video and, and for the podcast episode for sure. That's always a great way to reach out. Also, 90daymoneypro.com. Uh, I always tell folks, feel free to reach out. I love hearing from listeners, uh, any kind of questions they have, follow-ups or feedback, because I think we, we can all agree, Jonathan, you know, this is, um, this is teamwork. You know, no one is in this journey alone. And True. so to be able to realize that there are there is a whole village here to help you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's absolutely. something that I think is very special in this community. No, excellent. I really like that message. And so Dimitri, thanks, thanks again so much for your positivity, your energy, and sharing all your tips and story today. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Fantastic. See you.